world of fun and fantasy and ever-changing views and computer terminology. Commodore's news. Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to the Commodore Cave. My latest addition to the cave is something that I consider to be very unusual. This plus four Commodore computer. And whilst I'm very happy to add this to the cave, it came with something special that caught my eye. This setup was advertised locally, only about 30 minutes away, so I wasted no time heading over to check it out. This is what I picked up, the Commodore 4 Plus. Bizarrely, it's had the plus removed from the badge. I don't know why, I guess it's now just a Commodore computer. Uh, it came with the dreaded whoop, which uh, still is within parameters, but that's not going to be used, obviously. It came with a tape drive and a couple of cassette tapes as well, all of it working well. Now, you might notice I've missed one object, and that's what caught my eye, the monitor. Well, let's take this out. Even included the video cable. Thank you very much. We'll have a look at the box. There's the model number, which matches the number on the monitor. And that's the other side. On the top, just in a few different languages, we have some instructions if there's damage during transit. Unfortunately, didn't have the polys. If you're still watching at this point, how about clicking that like button now? It really does help the channel and it promotes it with other people interested in Commodore computers. The 1201 came in two case colors, the dark one, this, and also a light one, which is almost white. On the front here, we simply have brightness, contrast, and volume with our on-off switch, which turns on off, not presses. We've got our Commodore logo with a chicken head, and the model number here. Over to the side, we've got a speaker. Around the back, there is the model details, made in Singapore. On the back, we have horizontal and vertical adjusters, audio, video, and interestingly here, there's a 12 volt input, suggesting that perhaps this could run off a power supply from a vehicle. There's the serial number, 16135, which actually matches the box. Over the back here we have a carry handle and underneath it just air vents and that's about it. It's secured just by these four screws and two recessed into the handle. Let's open her up and see what's beneath. So we have our single speaker. Here's a quick peek inside the case. Now we can get a slightly better look at the board. Just for comparison purposes, we've got the 1081 monitor, very similar to the 1084, same size, uh, and the 1701 monitor, big beast it is. And then in the middle we have our 1201 monitor. This is 12 inches across, compared to the 14 inches of the other two common monitors. Switch on. Don't see these raster lines to the naked eye, only through the camera. Boot. Play on tape. Yep, that's what we're looking for. For the amber monitor screen, it's not too bad at all and something different to what I'm used to. This is a high resolution Pell monitor. I believe it was only ever sold in Australia and New Zealand, hence the 240 volts, which probably contributes to why we don't see very many of these around today. This is the first 1201 monitor I've actually ever physically seen. The monitor was probably intended for the Plus 4 and the Commodore 16 and the like, but it will also work on a C128, an A600 and A1200. And it's capable of displaying up to 640 by 512 with an 80 column display. The monitor is very lightweight, 
coming in at a mere 7.2 kilograms compared to 10.7 for the 1081 and a massive 14.4 kilograms for the 1701. Well that's it for me today from the Commodore Cave. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. It really helps. Or better still, make a comment. Or better still, subscribe. Till next time from the cave. See ya. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you.